Well, let's bring somebody else uh, who's a part of our team, we like to say. We're always checking in with her. She's been able to join us on our Facebook Live shows, which has been a lot of fun as well. But uh, welcome back on air, Dr. Jen. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you. Or I should say virtually be here, right? Virtually. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we can get these days. Oh, yes. It's okay. I'm enjoying it, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, again, as we are chatting from the comfort of our home, there's still so much we want to be able to talk to you about. And this first one kind of branches off a, an interview I know I had a week or so ago with an ER doctor. He said people are really being hesitant about going to the ER. And I know you're starting to see that, too. And that's why we wanted to chat with you today, because you're seeing kids not making it to those important wellness appointments and vaccines, too, are sometimes getting lost in the mix. Absolutely. It's a big concern that while we're all trying to, you know, stay safe and we're concerned about COVID-19, that we're missing uh, those important well-child visits, uh, those important milestones for keeping healthy. Um, and in fact, uh, we are seeing that well-child visits uh, have been reported to be down as low as 50%. Um, and that scares me because there's uh, not only is it important to keep an eye on your overall health, especially for children and babies, but also to keep up that immunization schedule um, because that's how we know those vaccines can work is when they're given uh, at the right intervals and the right frequency to be most effective. Well, and it's interesting, Dr. Jen, we're not talking about the corona vaccine, which I feel like, it, you know, is getting so much attention right, right now. But talk about the safety of these vaccines that have been tried and true and, and really the dangers if families maybe put them off because they're afraid to go to the doctor right now. Yeah, I mean, all of the vaccinations that are recommended for kids and even adults, they have been widely studied and no studies have shown them to be, you know, dangerous. Life, you know, life-threatening illnesses are very, you know, not even seen. The reports of autism, we know that scares everyone. Um, all the scientific literature and research has refuted that link. And so now can there be side effects, you know, typically mild rash, fever, absolutely. Um, but vaccinations are safe and they prevent against very life-threatening illnesses. And the danger, if we're not getting them uh, at the intervals that are recommended, is that A, they might not be as effective, um, and B, we're gonna put ourselves and others at risk of getting those infections um, and potentially having an outbreak um, you know, you can imagine that for some folks, depending on their living situation, um, you know, even staying home is not an option. They may live in close proximity to someone in an apartment complex. Um, they may have a family member that's an essential worker uh, that is being going out there and being exposed. And then on top of that, there are many kids and adults due to health issues that can't get vaccine all their vaccinations, right, because of immunocompromised states like having cancer. And so one of the things that we're really worried about is by delaying and not getting those vaccinations, we're going to see a resurgence in these infections um, and then more life-threatening illness um, as a result uh, to, 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 to our communities. I'm so glad you talked about how there's a big picture involved with this because I think there might be a misconception for people. Well, I'm at home. My child's with me. We're safe. We're not leaving. But there's such a bigger picture that I'm so glad you touched on because I think we all need to be reminded of that even with the coronavirus and as we talk about that and approach that. Absolutely. Um, we have to think about our community at large and keeping each other healthy and ourselves healthy. Um, and we, you know, put ourselves at risk when we put others at risk as well. And so um, we have to protect those though that are most vulnerable. And that's coming up as we all hear every day with the coronavirus, right? Because we know that certain populations are at higher risk. And kids, um, while, you know, the reports even from that infection have shown a, a lesser risk, if they're not immune. And we're seeing new, you know, uh, concerning complications that they could uh, encounter. And so I think it's important for us to think about our community at large and protecting those that are most vulnerable by keeping up with our important vaccinations. I want to give out a, a shout out, I think, to pediatrician offices, too, because from what I can tell and from what I've seen on social media and the ones that because uh, my son is 10 months old now, um, just had to go in for a well uh, visit. They're doing a really good job from everything that I've seen about kind of making sure that people are kind of isolated. I know we had to wait in their car and then we got called in. I don't think we had any contact with anybody except for the nurse and the doctor. 
Exactly. Yes. And, and we're seeing this, that pediatrician offices are doing their best to make it as low risk as possible. Um, masks, gloves, you know, limited contact with others, you know, staying in your car, making appointments so that, um, you know, you're by yourself when you are entering, um, you know, that the, the crowding is less. And so all of those strategies are, you know, very effective. And it's, you know, I think what I hope people will, will, you know, not be afraid to go to their pediatrician's office for is that by going, you know, and taking that one visit, you know, as recommended, you're actually in the long run, greatly uh, protecting your own health. So there is very little risk now because of the precautions that our offices are taking. And so I think we can do that. You know, Jen, we've got little under a minute here real fast. We're being told to wrap real quick, though. How is your family? We've got to ask, how's Bill? How's Zoe? How's Will? How's everybody doing right now? Oh, they're doing well. We are, um, you know, working from home, schooling at home, uh, it, you know, spending a lot of time in the pool. We're lucky to live in such a beautiful state where the weather is nice um, and just trying to stay healthy during this time. Um, but they're all doing great. We're trying not to drive each other too crazy. <laughs> I think we're going to join us on the Facebook Live here in the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that. We always love chatting with you. Dr. Jen, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And again, we enjoyed seeing her. We enjoyed that you are with us at home. And we hope you stay right there because we've got more Morning Blend right at the break.